Part 1, Lionfish Biology. Pteros volenes and Pteros miles are the invasive species that took the western waters by surprise, leading to the destruction of natural habitats and animal populations, while in turn starting fishing derbies and raising awareness of the problem of invasive species. To me, the lionfish have always been interesting. Their tear throughout the ocean and how people have tried to deal with the problem but have failed. The fish are ravenous, leaving only behind broken habitats, almost like the hog of the sea. They will eat anything and everything with a path of destructions and little to no predators. But before we go into the impact of the lionfish, I think it is first important to understand what and where the lionfish is and how it got to the western Atlantic Ocean in the Caribbean. Pteros is a scientific group of lionfish. Based on George Culver's 1816 French name Les Pteros, meaning fins, we're referencing the large dorsal fin and long pectoral fins on the fish. Lionfish have 12 species, or lionfish is part of a group of Pteros which have 12 different species with different characteristics like fin shape, color, but the main two that invaded the Caribbean and uh, Western Atlantic Ocean is Pteros phalaenus and Pteros milus, the red lionfish and the devil firefish. The most common species is the red lionfish, making up 93% of the lionfish that have invaded the Western Atlantic and Caribbean. Lionfish are reddish brown and covered with stripes on down their body like a tiger to go with their aggressive nature. In reality, the color and stripes help them camouflage in the sands to stalk their prey and eventually attack and kill them. Uh, the most notable feature of lionfish is the long 13 hard spinal dorsal fins running down the back of the fish with 10 softer fins. But these fins are more than just for show, they are venomous, and in total, the fish can have 18 of those venomous spines. They are covered with oval scales, and the adults can grow up to 18 inches long. A smaller fish, but really effective at prey, killing prey, and being very able to survive throughout the different environments. The little fish are really resilient and able to withstand a variety of environments from bracket coasts to mangrove swamps, they are able to survive in very tough environments. They can live up to 30 years in captivity and usually in the wild for 15 years. They can also live up to three whole months without consuming any food. They are extremely resilient to change and can adapt accordingly to the environment. Their anatomy is amazing. Such a little fish is capable of doing so much but how did they get to the Western Atlantic Ocean and the Caribbean Sea to cause the harm and leading up to their now infamous history? Part 2. The History of Lionfish The lionfish species is part of the Pteros family of fish or species of fish. There are 12 variants, but are more commonly known as just kind of the lionfish family or species as that is the most common and most well-known species or type. Uh, while they all play an important role in the invasion of the Western Atlantic and Caribbean, the main one we'll be focusing on is the red lionfish due to it making up 93% of the fish that have invaded. While the others are also important and all play a role, the most important is the red lionfish. All the lionfish species are native to the South Pacific and Indian Ocean regions, near and around India and Australia's coast. They are historically used for food, but are most important to the aquarium trade, as their spines and patterns make them very popular among aquarium enthusiasts. More commonly known as lionfish, the Pteros species of fish have been living in coral reefs for years, more around coastal reefs in warmer, shallower areas. In the past, they have been cooked with their venom being removed and there has been no recorded deaths due to lionfish ingestion. It is said to taste buttery and like grouper. Its texture is said to be buttery smooth as it melts in your mouth and is very tender and mild. 
while it's not the most popular to eat, if prepared correctly, it seems safe and delicious to eat. The global aquarium trade in marine ornamental species has over 1,800 species of fish and at least 125 different families, encompassing many different forms of marine life. But this billion dollar industry is also responsible for $5.4 billion a year annually in environmental damage due to the fish either being released or escaped and in turn harming natural environments and affecting the fishing industry. While there is no guarantee of what really started the invasion of lionfish, it is most likely due to aquarium trade. Another theory is the fish could have traveled over in water that is used to balance in ships or just kind of water in general, and when it got to the Caribbean and Western Atlantic, it, it went into the waters and it reproduced there. But this theory is not really likely compared to the aquarium trade, as that is when they're forced reportedly moved to the U.S. and island regions. As owners of lionfish who did not want them anymore or had too many spawns would release them into the ocean. The first lionfish spotting was in the Western Atlantic Ocean and Caribbean region was found in 1985. And there were no other spotted until many years later when they started popping up more and more. The invasion started slowly ramping up in the early 2000s, and by 2009, there was an established lionfish population in the Atlantic coast and Caribbean. The exponential growth of lionfish shocked the natural habitats and native range of fish as compared to the native species, they were there overnight and had the ecosystem had no time to adapt. Uh, as the popular lionfish grew and spread across the entire gulf, more inward and up and down the edges of land and shallow waters, coral reefs, and even swamps, lionfish were spotted more inward by the gulf by 2010 and in Session Bay Sanctuary by 2011. In 2015, over 2,500 lionfish were spotted in Session Bay Sanctuary alone. Over 1,400 were removed for study, but this barely made a dent due to the large population now living in the bay. The invasion is rather recent and happened very fast due to the lionfish's biology. They traveled over on boats for aquarium trade, only to be led into the waters and repopulate and take over the coasts of the Western Atlantic and Caribbean. The increased population had made new activities and problems within communities and ecosystems they now surrounded. Lionfish hunting has now become a sport and has provided for people in the Western Atlantic and Caribbean areas. It has also encouraged diving to hunt lionfish as they are a kill on sight, usually with harpoons or spears, or they are trapped and killed later. It's like created a new sport. And even though the invasive species has negatively affected the ocean and has brought new awareness to the major problem that invasive species are, it is also shown the many negative effects that invasive species have and how they must be prevented as it has very major consequences. Part 3. The Problem Lionfish are a problem, but why? Lionfish are extremely destructive, terrorizing the ecosystem and ruining coral reefs and native fish populations. The fish are not picky, eating all they can fit inside their mouths, otherwise known as indiscriminate eaters, meaning they can eat all they can fit. This ability allows them to eat over 100 species of fish and crustaceans and invertebrates in the ocean, competing with other local fish like grouper and snapper eating all the smaller fish that they also need to survive. But they also compete with many other fish in their environment, challenging them to like a Hunger Games kind of competition where there's not enough food to go around. This affects the reef by killing small animals that help keep coral clean and alive. So killing these fish kills the coral reefs themselves and then a lack of food kills the marine life population. But the reason they can be so destructive is due to their ability to lay mass eggs, reproducing very often and laying so many eggs. After a year old mating female can lay up to 
50,000 eggs every three days, this can add up to 3 million eggs a year. This consistent rate which they are able to lay eggs is why they were first able to take over so fast. Normal goldfish can only spawn once a year. That's why lionfish are such a problem. Their population is hard to control as they keep laying eggs and having more spawn. Lionfish have so many eggs that there's just not enough to be, not enough food to go around, and it's hard to keep control. Lionfish have so many eggs that there's just too many. The population growth has been exponential, starting slow and then increasing rapidly because of these factors of indiscriminate eating. There is little to no predators known, efficient ways of hunting, and just the large spawn they produce. The lionfish massacring native species can lead to the death of native ecosystems and entire families of fish. Small animals and other land animals can even be affected. It's like a butterfly effect as the lionfish will kill one species and without that species another species can't survive and without that the coral reefs might not be able to survive and without that so many other species in it are affected due to it. This little fish has really affected the gulf and ocean it has taken over. Part 4. Solving the problem. The problem that lionfish present is an enormous undertaking to solve and there are many methods that have been proposed. The problem is larger than you think as scientists has now accepted that there is no longer a way to exterminate the species from the western Atlantic Ocean and Caribbean as there's just too difficult to get rid of. Now they want to try to minimize the spread and impact of lionfish across the region by stopping them from spreading any further. There are a variety of methods that scientists have come up with to help the problem of controlling lionfish but none are very efficient or effective. First, Lionfish hunting is legal and encouraged among divers and fishers. Harving, harvesting of Pitorius valenus and Pitorius mild species. This allows fisheries to be able to catch and sell lionfish for profit, giving them incentive to try to kill and catch the spiny creatures. Another way at places like the Sanctuary Bay has recreational divers and are given permits to hunt and kill and eat the fish with spear guns and other variety of weapons. There are a variety of methods they use to trap or kill them. The first, like I said, is a spear gun hunting, which involves either a band pulled tightly to launch the spear or a compressed air tank that launches the spear. More traditional weapons can also be used like a pole spear or a Hawaiian sling. In reality, any sharp air object works for lionfish hunting. When the spear gun is used, they must try to go for the head and kill on impact as they will try to escape even if severely wounded. Another method is trapping lionfish. This includes a dome trap, which is a trap that is set and prepared for the lionfish's arrival. The dome trap version 2 uses two half shells that close around the lionfish. This trap is highly efficient and is looked good upon as other traps use bait to attract fish and can in turn catch other types of species. This trap is made exclusively for lionfish leading to fewer fish casualties among other fish. This trap also leaves them alive which means they can be used to eat, study, or for aquariums. The third method, also the most interesting method to me, is the human controlled robot. This robot is used to capture lionfish. It does this by first having two long prongs that stick out of the front that go on either side of the lionfish. And when it's maneuvered correctly and it surrounds the lionfish, it sends an electrical current across the two prongs and in turn, it stuns the lionfish with an electric shock. After the lionfish is knocked out or severely stunned, the robot then vacuums up the lionfish inside of the tank it has inside its body of the robot then the fish are still alive to be used for different purposes and are back, brought back up to the surface. Then the lionfish can be studied, killed, kept, eaten, so on. This is a great method due to it being very safe. 
the people catching the lionfish don't have to enter the water and can stay within range of the robot for it to be controlled. This allows more people to help stop the problem and could lead to a future of robots autonomously controlling it themselves to catch these invasive species and bring them to a certain location or area for them to be killed and reduce their population. The final method is my favorite though. It's just divers going down with spears to hunt, but instead of just doing it for fun, it's a competition. They are known as lionfish derbies or lionfish invitationals. Part 5. Lionfish Invites or Derbies Lionfish Invites, where the name of the game is to see who can catch the most lionfish. There are many different organizations that have hosted lionfish-like derbies, where there are multiple dive teams of divers and they compete for to see who can catch the most lionfish. One of the most populous ones I could find was the 2016 Pensacola Lionfish Tournament, a two-day event from May 14th to 15th in 2016. The main event is the lionfish hunting where teams of scuba participants split into different groups and compete to catch the most, but also the largest lionfish. In 2016, they broke the record at the time catching over or catching to 8,089 lionfish in only a two-day event. But the tournament also helps raise awareness for the importance of the lionfish invasion and how it has affected the coral reef. So it's more for just the divers. It has over 7,000 attendees spreading the information about what to do with lionfish and how to help coral reefs and the awareness for the species. They teach how to properly fillet and debone a lionfish and use it in a variety of dishes and other meals. But there were also multiple events going on on those two days in Jacksonville, Panama City Beach, Key Largo, Sebastian, and St. Petersburg. All events held in the two day period caught a recorded 14,067 lionfish. Lionfish tournaments are an ongoing and there are more happening this year. They usually take place earlier in the year, but there are more opportunities to take place even this year. These tournaments are important due to the fact that they are helping this environmental crisis and also showing the importance of the invasive species and invasive species as a whole. I think it's great showing the damages of lionfish to an ecosystem while also making it fun for people to compete and just be there to raise awareness for the cause. This is just one of the many ways that people are supporting the cause of coral reefs and helping to end and help the problem of the invasive species of lionfish. Part 6. Lionfish around the world and to the future. The invasive species problem that encompasses the world due to human involvement is a major problem to all ecosystems across the globe. Whether it's anacondas in the Everglades, ash boring beetles in our trees, or lionfish in the Caribbean, it is a widespread problem. Spreading any information about the problem helps show what a real problem it is and how common practice can help prevent the problem. While it's hard to exterminate an invasive species, reducing the impact is the most important. There are many ways to help the cause, whether it is not releasing any additional animals into the environment, whether it's natural or not, as diseases and parasites could be infecting the animal. Releasing species that don't belong can lead to them reproducing and harming native species and in turn harming the entire ecosystem. Or releasing other diseases and parasites that also will harm the ecosystem as it kills many animals and can kill plants. These animals, like the lionfish, harm the ecosystem and in turn hurt the environment. These trees and sea plants that are killed, ones that produce oxygen that we need to breathe all over the world that allow us to live. While it is important to protect the environment and plant life by doing everyday things we can, big or small, releasing one small animal and if more people release the same small animal or just any animal in general, it can lead to a downfall of an entire ecosystem. 
while the future for the invasive species is not the brightest, I think the new inventions and strategies could lead to a more sustainable future and environment that is not in danger of these invasive species. While there are many solutions trying to be invented, the best solution is to not start the problem in the beginning. Don't release an invasive species. Don't let it happen in the first place. Because as, as if it's never there, the problem can occur and leads to obviously no damage and is better for the environment and for everyone as a whole. Overall, the lionfish history, while rather recent, it spread along the coasts of the Gulf and Caribbean. While the ravenous fish ate anything they could, they ingested many different types of marine life, fish, smaller invertebrates, and anything they could put their mouth around. This appetite hurt the native population, and in turn, it harmed local coral reefs and the fish population which people relied on to eat and sell. This was due to their many abilities as they are very resilient and able to produce a lot. But as the problem spread and awareness was raised, it created new inventions and other methods to help control the population. Raising awareness and helping to spread the word about invasive species was a very important thing it did. Why there is much more about the invasive species, and this is just a mid-level look at the lionfish problem, I hope you found it interesting and enjoyed. And I think it is important to realize that this problem affects more than people that just live around the Caribbean Sea and uh, the coasts, as it affects our oxygen levels and just kind of it raises awareness to invasive species, which are all around us due to humans' travel and everything. And I think it's just important to know that the best way to prevent it is to never let an invasive species out. But I thought this was a interesting topic. It's kind of an updated topic as I did a project like this when I was younger. And it was interesting to see a more in-depth look at the lionfish problem. And I hope you enjoyed and you found it interesting as well. Bye.